morning. Welcome to the Geneva Motor Show 2018. This is second day of press day. First day I went around all the stairs gathering what cars I wanted to show you today. And now I'm going to give you my personal guided tour around this fantastic show. All sorts of cars here. And I'm going to show you the good, bad and ugly of this year's Geneva show. Let's get going. I'm going to start in Hall 1 and then work my way all the way around and end up with my show star. Uh, but in Hall 1, there's some, you immediately come up the escalators and there's a few oddities around the place. I've got here super early uh, because you've got to sharpen your elbows on the second press day to get to see what you really want to see on the stands because it gets a bit more crowded. Anyway, over here, I have a flying car. I see various flying cars at uh, events over the years, but uh, this one is a superimposed over the beautiful Alpine scene. He looks very happy and serene up there flying his, his little gyrocopter with lovely little cab. Um, whether it has actually taken off, I can't tell you. There's no one on stand who can tell me, but uh, another flying car for a huge amount of money. One day we'll, have, we'll test a flying car, but I'm not sure this is the one. Well, let's see. Good to see something very strange. Although it is registered in, yeah, in Holland, so maybe this does, does fly the globe. I'm doing it a disservice. Next to that is the Hennessy Venom F5. These crazy, super uh, fast cars uh, from America. We tested them at Evo. They had some exciting runs at over 200 miles an hour, shall we say. You could ask Dickie Media about it one day. But uh, another exhibit, I think I've beaten everyone here. To, uh, no one on the stand that can give me any further info on it, but I'm sure you'll be reading about it in Evo magazine soon. There are always some surprise cars that you don't expect to see at the Geneva Motor Show. And here's the corner of those. Here is the Marzell. Saw this out in Switzerland um, last year when I did that Concorso. Fabulous to see it again. I am completely in love with that silver trim of this car. Uh, I did a bit more detail on it when I was out in, um, on that event. Beautifully restored by a passionate owner who picked it up a few years ago and has given it a really sympathetic restoration. Remember, this has one bank uh, of a Mura V12, so a six-cylinder engine. It was the forerunner to the Espada. Great to see. Lancia Bertoni CBO, just a wonderful concept car. They've gone a bit over the TT with a with a spray gun. Um, I think that is actually meant to be the finish. There you go. It's sort of all it's misted in uh, brown, very 70s. What date is it? 78. That was first shown. Uh, and then a particular favourite of mine, a Pinaferina Birdcage 75. This beautiful Maserati that I'm very um, lucky to have been in and had a ride in. This was based on the well, it was the Maserati MC12, wasn't it? The sort of Enzo type car, beautiful car. It was a nightmare to drive. I drove this up um, at Goodwood uh, Festival Speed um, with the then boss of Maserati. Great experience. We were absolutely cooking in it. He couldn't stall, it couldn't do it. it was, yes, it wasn't the best running car, but it, I think it was one of the most beautiful concept cars ever created. I really ought to get into the show proper, but this Bitzerini concept car of 2006. Ah, oh, look at them. 1968 Bitzerini open race car, the P538. And then there's the Bitzerini Manta, and I've not seen that car before. That is central driving position. Look at that. Look at that. And an engine right tucked at the back, it looks like a, a V8 looking by the number of cars, what a great thing that is. How about that, not seen that before. Serena Manta. Right, enough of those, let's get into the show proper. Another stand I didn't expect to see here, the Chelsea Truck Company um, have an exhibit here. And that includes <laughs> their civilian 6x6 Defender. Coming to Chelsea, I guess, with a name of a company like that. Paul Smith has had anything to do with the, uh, the design of the inside. Wow, there's a car the world doesn't need. I think I'll have my regular Defender V8, thanks. All well, from the Chelsea um, truck company, you could have this Wrangler version uh, they've done, which looks slightly better than a Defender version for me. Although someone looks like they got carried away with the black anti-chip out of the wheel arches and decided to do the whole car in the same finish. 
that might be a bit tricky to keep clean and will confuse every detailer who's trying to polish this out. Cool thing. Over at Pagani, here's a, a little a Zonda HP the Roadster. So this is a little special commission done by Horatio. It's the sort of thing you can do um, when you own the company. I th it is slightly fussy and overwrought, but um, I don't know. It's a very sexy thing, and one of the most amazing drives I've ever had in a Zonda was in a Cinque Roadster, and uh, that is my ultimate uh, Zonda by far. And this isn't that far off. It is a little bit overdressed. I wouldn't have quite as much detail going on, but the Cinque Roadster was unbelievable drive. The guy I um, I borrowed his car. He still owns it, and I, I was told by Pagani that um, the values of those things are now around the five, six million mark. The, it's such a sought after car, the Cinque Roadster. Although this one is actually more cut off. This uh, has that um, Roadster screen. You look at the front, a beautifully done uh, sort of coach bush effect. I don't know if this one actually has any sort of roof. I don't know. But yeah, Pagani stands always somewhere to stop and stare. And it's also another uh, one of the few car stands where they just open everything up to have everything on show. This wire of the Roadster, they are sold out, uh, they told me. And uh, if you want to order a new Pagani today where you get the new car, I asked what sort of deposit is there to do that. He said, mm, from you, nothing, we just add you to the list. So I've been added to the list for the new Pagani, which will be in 2020. I'll tell you more when I know more. Ooh, turn the lights up bright in the Porsche stand. New for this year was the GT3 RS you see here. This is the final version, they tell us, of the normally aspirated 4-litre um, GT3 version for the 992 car rocks up next year, which is all turbo and hybrid. So this is the last normally aspirated one, 520 horsepower, metric horsepower, presumably all sold out. Um, so yeah, we're gonna to have to wait and see to the spring and just see what this drive's like. It's, it will be a collector's item though, being the last of the line. I haven't got one coming. Here's Porsche's other star of the show. This is the Mission E Cross Turismo. So this is sort of an all road version of their Mission E that is their all electric vehicle. Comes out next year. I feel this Mission E has lost something in translation from the wonderful uh, concept car we first saw and it was low set and then as it's got closer to the production it's sort of got filled out and got a bit bulkier and it got pretty close to the Panamera uh, sort of look so it's lost its sort of streamlined look. They're also uh, quoting highly ambitious um, recharge times which um, there aren't really the chargers capable of delivering 100 kilowatt um, charges as yet but uh, we'll wait and see if this is the electrics revolution this is what it's going to look like we'll have a look at the Jagger stand at the moment but I think the I-Pace has got it on looks over this very little to see on the Audi stand um, their new story was the Audi A6 I'm not even going to bother showing it it looks as dull as the last Audi A6 I'm sure it's jolly wonderful but that's not the sort of car I've come to Geneva to have a look at what I want to take you to is over the other side because Lamborghini I've got some fun things to show you. Their big unveil was this Hurricane Performance Spider. Disappointingly it adds quite a lot of weight, 120 odd kilos heavier than your regular coupe version. Has all the uh, usual, um, the aero that was exa exactly the same on the Preferred Momente, there was the valve controlled rear spoiler etc. But yeah, it's not going to be quite as pure driving as the Performante Coupe version. I think it's about 20, 25,000 pounds extra to have it. I would just have a regular, I think, uh, Perfomante Spider. I was gonna have a Spider and, and the Perfomante should be a, a coupe, a bit like you don't get a convertible uh, Porsche GT3. I also wish they'd start looking at ditching the four wheel drive. I think it's time that for the true performance versions of uh, Lamborghinis uh, reverted to the two wheel drive. There's such clever traction control systems. They could shed a load of weight but it seems as though it's part of their DNA now. Bit of a shame. This is the first time I've got close to the Urus, the um, SUV Lamborghini, and I was surprised. I got inside it, and hopefully I can find what I can open the doors on, but uh, it really works very well inside. Whatever you think, whether they should be doing it or not, sales are taken off. It's quite a statement. It's priced uh, aggressively, 650 horsepower, 
uh, V8 in it. I'm just going to quickly tuck around here. You're looking at a calmer sort of sound like this. It's way better looking than a KN or something like that. Yes, it's a higher price point, but you know what? I like it. I like they've done it, and it hopefully will give freedom to do crazier Lamborghini super sports cars like the Aventador we see there, which I just think is such a state design statement. Never disappoints. I wish it was uh, it was lighter and bulky. And again, they went to two wheel drive, but it, we sought to celebrate that 700 horsepower. V12 normal aspirated engine. Just change the gearbox, let's get an updated gearbox in it and let's see what this car can really do. And here is the Bugatti Chiron Sport and I stood around for this one because I thought this is going to be an announcement of a sort of sports series. Turns out, no it's not. They've dialed a little bit of weight out of it, 18 kilos saved, which on a percentage scale when you're over two tons is not a lot. Uh, no extra power, a bit more dynamic they tell us, so it's a, unfortunately it's the start of the limited edition Chirons, which I didn't expect to see quite this early, um, but it's, what do you say about this car, it's such a statement car, it's great that they build it and all the rest of it, but uh, what, a, what an extraordinary vehicle it is, it is pushing the boundaries, it still exists, it's two fingers to the autonomous cars that we have seen littered all around the show and the electric cars. Um, this has makes no effort to save CO2 or planet, it just is designed to go very, very quickly and scare people when it does that magnificently. So two Regueras on the Coney's Egg stand this year. Um, Christian hasn't bought the RS Jera this year, but he did announce in the press conference yesterday there's going to be a new Coney's Egg here next year, which I can't wait for. It just, I mean, it, what is on the stand is sort of the cars I've got in build at the moment. This is actually the cars going around uh, down the stand. And if you go around the corners as CCX, you can see if you are coming to the show as well. So next year is going to be a big year for Coney's Egg. Right, let's have a look at Bentley. There's the Conti GT, which I think is a dramatic improvement uh, on the last one. It's lost the sort of look of bulk uh, and is a really good looking car. Unlike this car, which is the Bentley Bentayga, their first hybrid version of this car they're now showing. They're showing the V8, the V8 diesels and W12s, and now we have a V6 hybrid version in a disgusting two-tone paint, which I'm not keen on, as you can probably tell. But um, it is potentially the future of these sort of cars. Hybrid seems to be the stepping stone rather than full electric, and it will sort of suit the car, but dearie me, someone went a bit OTT on the options on that car. Well, I'll finish the Bentley stand on the Conti GT, because that's a better looking car. That is a great interior, absolutely great. Really nicely done. Go down the middle of Hall 1, there's a sea of strange cars. Um, MTM over there, I just wanted to come round to here, Super, Touring Super Lazera, I know these cars, this is the, the Alpha 8C version, and they've done this one for this year, which is based on the Maserati Gran Turismo. I wish they hadn't bothered, really. Um, don't know what's going on on the bonnet with those strange lines. It's sort of got a grill going on. I don't know where the headlights are, whether they're those two little headlights down below. You think it's going to be a spider version or something or lift out that sort of stainless steel panel really don't know what's going on wrap round rear screen quite like that and the sort of rear wrap round as well how do these companies exist who commissions these cars i wonder where this this car has come from um, but uh yeah i think the gran turismo is a a great design it didn't didn't really deserve this you can do better they did those super touring the the state versions and other cars i've seen them do it has a sort of look of di tamasso about it this car uh, and that's not a good look but let's see what else we can find at the show here's ital design super uno again this is Ah, they did this is a convertible version of the car they showed uh, zero uno last year there was a coupe version last year it's like a sort of hurricane plus plus look at the craziness on going on on this car it is a look isn't it I, you know we'll get down to mclaren in a minute and see what they've done with the center but it's this sort of really clean really aggressive um bla <clears throat> blades at the aero blades at the back and the venting yeah quite something probably around the million pound mark Another flying car, this one of its own personal drone to come and pick it up and take it away. 
strangely hasn't been working during the show. It has an Audi's badge on it. Well, I suppose that's the Itaw design, but uh, yeah. Things you see at motor show just the once. Oh, it's Filippo, the designer. The guy to be interviewed there is a designer here, and he was also the uh, designer for the uh, Ventador and the Huracan when he was at Lamborghini. Filippo Perini, let's see if I just zoom in on him. A really talented design, absolute ca car uh, enthusiast through and through. Well, next we come to the sea of VW-ness and Skoda. And it is, oh, what do I bring out from this? There's all this talk was about their ID cars and the, um, electric uh, cars, autonomous cars, etc. Uh, just one thing I wanted to show you over here was a corner of GTI. Lot, GTI is expanding. So in this scene, everything's going electric and autonomous. VW recognised that their DTI brand people really like. So there's there's this lovely little uh, VW up GTI. Friends have bought this. They love this car. It's a 12 grand little hot hatch. It's 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 a great driving car. Has all the spirit for a super quick. And uh, so they've got a real hit on their hands with that car. What else have we got here? We've got the Polo GTI as well. We've got the Golf R. Um, so it's, yeah, it's good to see that amongst all the other talk, VW recognise they've got something pretty special with, with their GTI brand and they're expanding it and bringing it into new models. Here we have Madness of Tech Art. Uh, I had a Tech Art exhaust on my Porsche uh, uh, Turbo 993. They do some good work actually. Um, there's a oh, 4 litre GT3 they've done over there as well. Surprising how popular they are actually in Germany. Tech Art have a great name. I guess that's why they still exist in this crazy overcrowded marketplace. But here is uh, news for Seat, who have introduced the Cupra. Cupra is a, going to be a separate performance brand with this copper tint. You can see it on the mirrors and on the dash, and that's their new badge. So think of Abarth from Fiat 500. Um, this is this is what um, Seat are going to do. This is their new performance brand for Seat, and it's going to be a separate standalone model. You're going to see future Cupra hot models uh, in the future. They've done a great branding job, actually. I think it's uh, it looks it looks excellent. There's a surprise Subaru uh, Vizi Tor Concept Tourer world premiere. I think that's a really good looking car. It's not what I expect from Subaru at all. Uh, it'd be lovely to think they might actually produce it. And how about that? There's a little corner of Britishness at the Geneva show, the David Brown Automotive. So we've seen the Speedback, this is the Silverstone edition they've done, and also their remastered little minis. These have been uh, a big hit for them. Yeah. Price point is pretty high on them, but uh, they're as cute as anything. Really nicely done. I love that little puddle lamp they've put in a mirror. Very nicely done. OTT lever straps on that one. Uh, big hit. Big, big hit for them. Silverstone just adds some extra details um, over what we've seen before. This is an expensive car, though. This six, seven hundred thousand pound car. And I just wish the underpinnings were a bit more exciting. I mean, it's based on the XK8 supercharged, but they I love them for that little mini they've done. Right, that's quick whip round uh, hall number one, but there's one I've left out, and that's Aston Martin Lagonda. There, there's some really special stuff going on. And the Lagonda there is almost my, my car of the show. But let's go and have a look over on their stand. Hard to know where to begin, Aston Martin. Um, this year, Velorki. Here we are. There is a ultimate track version of the Velorki. Not yet in production, but this is has more extreme downforce, uh, a bit more stripped out. <coughs> Hard to think, imagine it was a more extreme version, but there it is. Um, such a statement, this car. A bit more horsepower from its um, V12, 6.5 litre V12. God knows how they fitted that in there and uh, 
those. This is a this is a trend that we're seeing. Is this super extreme track versions of cars? We'll have a look at McLaren in a moment. Um, because there are no rules, because there's no racing regulations, there's nothing holding back the designer to add as much downforce as is physically possible. What else have we got here? Well, we've got the new, um, new little Vantage, which I, know, I think is a great looking car. We pop round here, here it is in production form, seen it in the Bond movies of course, and I've seen it sort of tripping around Gaiden for quite a while now. Big clamshell bonnet on it, uh, very distinctive and then this open grille with this sort of lip around it highly distinctive car price is, is really rocketed up used to be uh, Vantage was in the um, 70 80 thousand pound mark now it's 120 thousand uh, pound mark to start but um, again the V8 AMG V8 I think it's gonna be a really good car but here's what I really want to show you and that is the Lagonda concept. Look at that for an interior. Now this is Aston's vision of an autonomous or electric future. Uh, they're going to say that Lagonda is a, a brand that will never be powered by a regular uh, IC engine. So no petrol version, this is pure electric. I read in an autocar report quite a good story that they were looking to announce a partner with this car uh, at the show. Hasn't quite been done, but a major partner along the lines of Google, Apple, or someone like that, as to with them they help them with the architecture because it looks from the spec they're talking on this car, it will have solid state batteries. The charge times are just unbelievable. Um, but what a statement, what a design statement this car is. Complete freedom. And uh, I just love that this is a complete surprise when I saw it. Uh, and it just pushes the boundaries, it makes you think again. This is a Rolls Royce Phantom type of car. That's the sort of interior feel of this car. Being being autonomous, where you can just turn, twizzle the seats around and face that way if you want. Who knows what the future holds, but for an Aston show car, I think this is as good as it gets. Absolutely beautiful. I'm showing a couple of concepts. This one here, and there's the Starling Buck over here, which if they were going to do an SUV version of um, this vision concept, it'll look something like this. And let's say this is 2023 or something like that. So it's not as far as away as you might imagine. But what a design statement that is. Really special. Okay, that's hall one done. Just hall two to go, which is all below me down there. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> 